Hello again, this is Marxist, and after a bit of bronchitis took me out of making TF2 videos for a while, I'm feeling well enough now that I think I could probably get through making one of these, or at least doing it in parts. So, welcome to this little guide. It's going to be a guide to mid for medic players. In this video, I'm going to go over some general guidelines for medic players at mid. I'm going to go over your positioning, what you should try to do, and when you should leave, which is the most important one and often the most overlooked. When I watch a newer player's demo, usually the mid fight, especially for Medic, is one of the major issues at play, so I wanted to give this a better look. I'll be using video examples as well to demonstrate points. And there should be little links out to the side for you to click on if you would like to review just an individual segment, not the whole video, because I have a feeling this might be a little bit longer than usual. Those clickable links should be up relatively soon. <laughs> so just to make sure we have a solid foundation, I'm going to go over a generalized rollout that will work for every single map, with a few exceptions, which I'll go over at the end. Rolling out, you want to heal your demo to 260. Wait until he does his first big jump, then turn around, heal a soldier that has not yet jumped or hurt himself in any way. Get him to 300, heal both your scouts to 185, continue heal the jumping soldier. You should find an equalizing soldier then at some point, heal him to 300, and then fight mid. There are a few exceptions to that generalized routine, and they all have to do with the soldier class. On granary, it's often better to have the pocket jump under the assumption that the pocket is running a shotgun. The reason that you would do that is a gunboat soldier jumping is going to net you a few less uber percentage points than the shotgun soldier who's jumping would because he's going to hurt himself more every rocket jump whereas the gunboat soldier is going to be unable to charge at a certain point. He won't drop himself under 285. On process, if your roamer likes to do the super jump, you'll need to buff him before the demo, so just get him to 300 real quick, and then he'll be out the door and gone forever. And then on Viaduct, it's impossible to equalize. It's better if both soldiers don't do any pre-round jumping, so they maintain their crit seals, and you'll just get your two soldiers to 300. They'll be to mid in a way. In the second part of the video, we'll be talking about medic positioning at mid and also what you would like to see from your team. I'm going to go over some general rules in a list format, and then we're going to watch a couple video examples from all different levels of TF2 of what that medic saw at mid and what was good about it and what was bad about it. Going into mid as medic, there should be six basic things on your mind on basically any map. The first is, do you have a scout guardian? Because if you don't, you're hosed. You want to have that scout there to deny jumpers, deny early rushes. It'll just make life better if you've got a nice mama bear scout in the vicinity. You want at least two or three players to heal and or to protect you. However, you want no more than two or three players to heal or protect you. Because then you're going to be too balled up and it's going to be really easy for a demo man or a jumping soldier to just annihilate a whole swath of you. You want a clean escape route so that if you do decide to get out, there's not going to be a whole bunch of problems coming for you. You want a readily available health pack. If you don't have a readily available health pack, you may want to look into asking your teammates to sort of manipulate the other team to give you an open lane to a health pack. And... If you die early, it should be very expensive for the other team to do that to you. There are going to be times where, especially say on Granary, where you're going to step out to mid and you're going to die immediately. And if that's just going to happen, but if that team decides to do that to you, it should cost them two or three players. And now we're going to look at about 10 video examples of the opening phases of mid from all different levels of TF2 in North America. Now I should note before we get to actually looking at mid fights and how certain medics behaved in them, that these things happen really, really fast. And so it's difficult for you to always make the right choice. So I'm not trying to call anybody out or anything. And... 
what you should do during the rollout period, at least at the very start of it, is talk with your team and figure out how, if something didn't go right, how you could fix it. And then the rest of it will come with experience and a little bit of mental preparation. The first med we'll look at is from Season 12, and Pure is the medic. We're going to see Mixup do a pretty passive strat here, but the important thing to see out of this is that there's always a scout looking to protect Pure, and there's always at least two people for him to heal at all times throughout this mid, and he ends up not even getting pressured at all. In the second mid, we'll see Mixup go for the exact same strat that they did last time, playing very passively, but it ends up not turning out this time. And what happens is although Brad's got people to heal and they're looking to protect him, they end up going sort of in between passive and aggressive. And that's something that you cannot do because it exposes your flank. And here you can clearly see the moment that this mid ended up being a loss. You can see Pure sees three people coming to kill him. Once on the extreme right, just out of the frame, you can see his little scout legs. And there's no more bubble around him. There's no little pocket, if, to use a football term, for what the quarterback is in when he wants to throw. There's no more little pocket for Brad, and his team's hurt. So that's that's it, and it's a mid-loss for mix-up. In this case, what what he could have done is back up much more quickly, that's a decision that he probably couldn't have made because things, as, as I said, things happen really quickly. And in this case, he just gets caught out, as does basically the whole rest of his team. At this mid, we're going to see HRG go for a right-sided Badlands mid. And you can tell right here, Shay doesn't like it. He doesn't like what he sees and he wants to leave. But he's going to stay with it, and that ends up being his undoing, because now he's he's only got Lansky over here to heal, and he's surefire to die, and that is the end of the mid for, L for HRG, rather. And this mid's a lot like the previous one that we just saw. If you find that you're bogged down, not really moving, then you as medic need to start thinking about getting out because you're not long for this world. And you can tell Shade really didn't like what he saw, but he stuck with it anyways, having faith in his teammates, and it ends up with a mid-loss. So if you find you're not getting traction and you've lost your bubble, it's time to think about getting out or quickening your death. We're going to see the same strat from HRG on this mid as well, where they go to the right, and they never establish a footing on mid, but instead of leaving, they just kind of hang around, and they end up getting swarmed and destroyed. And here from main, we're going to see You Must Mike on med go to mid. And he's going to buff both of his soldiers and then dump out the bottom, which isn't that bad. But right here, he should be hearing alarm bells. There's only one person to heal. There's only one, and now he's dead. And you can see there's a moment of hesitation when he peeks out of that lower door and only sees one person to heal. He doesn't want to go. He ends up going anyways. Again, snap decision-making at mid. If you don't feel comfortable and you only see one player to heal at mid... Probably best not to do what you're about to do and go through that doorway to get face rolled by a soldier. Here we'll see Caspian of the Rent Homies, same match actually, uh, go to mid. And you can see he's got a much better setup at the opening with a lot more people to heal all at once. And you can see it presents a really strong front because they cap mid really quickly. Unfortunately, Caspian becomes a little bit separated and they end up giving up the point because they kind of just let AG get back in there. But you can see it's a much safer situation for Caspian and ultimately better for his team if they didn't flub it later. Now we'll see the IMAG edition with London calling it Medic go to mid left sided on Gullywash. He gets backed up a little bit early. And then ends up coming back in, and you can see he's actively attempting to establish a scout pocket around himself. 
by trying to manipulate his own position so as to survive. It ultimately doesn't work out, but the mid ends up kind of a wash for both teams, so it turns out okay. Here we're going to see tonight's entertainment's bopper going to mid. They're going to go for a right-sided mid on Gully Wash. Same match we just saw, different mid. And Bopper doesn't really have much of a protective bubble. It's just two soldiers kind of down on the ground with him. And he notices a soldier coming for him, and there's nothing he can do about it. He's, he's dead to rights. And that's a disaster for your mid, because they just took away your medic, and it didn't really cost them anything important. The moral of this story is if you don't have a protective bubble, and you don't have a scout sort of hovering around you... You need to either find such a position or leave. And Bopper does neither of those in this case. Here we're going to see Owl going to mid on the new map, Coal Plant. They're going to do kind of an oddish rollout where they go a little bit to the left. And he's going to come out of main. Unfortunately, I think I caught him at a bad moment because there's not... After this initial segment here, he's not really healing anybody, and that's inefficient. But here, he has a protective bubble. Even though he doesn't have a scout hovering around him, he's manipulating the map to do so. Now, his team's given a death already, and he gives a second, and he's hurt, so he just leaves. So we're going to see same match, different team. And they're going to go for a more left-sided rollout, and they're heals are going to be a lot more efficient coming into mid. He doesn't really have a bubble coming out here, which you'll see right now. It's just soldier demo and other soldier, but that's fine. They're playing it pretty passively. They also get the first kill. Then he's now got his scout bubble and they could begin pressing up, but they kind of hang back because they know there are people behind them going to come in and they end up losing too much in there and he flees. So hopefully out of the last 10 videos, you see sort of as a review, the six guidelines coming into play. We definitely saw the importance of having scout guardians. We definitely saw the importance of having two or three players to heal. Unfortunately, I didn't find a mid where two, there were too many people all in one place, but trust me, it happens. It's not that hard to imagine. And then we, we did see a couple cases where clean escape routes were used. Or in the case where London chose not to use his clean escape route. We saw the importance of having readily available health packs, although nobody really used them in the clips. They could have been used. And then we did see a few cases where the medic died early and it was not expensive. And that, that can't happen or you're going to lose mid. So for part three, I'm going to talk about what you want to do at mid and also some general ideas and team play things that should be done as well. Now here's a, a brief list of things you want to do when you go to mid. I'm not going to use video examples for these because we already saw some of them in the previous 10 clips and because it'd be kind of hard for me to find specific clips for each idea. But one that is really overlooked, especially at the lower levels, is that you must survive. If you are not surviving at mid, there is something dreadfully wrong with what you are doing at mid. N you're not going to live all the time, and some maps you're going to die a lot more than you normally would. There are things that you must do once that occurs, but you should go into every mid with the goal of surviving. Also, you should go into every mid with the goal of healing scouts. They're your primary heal targets after you get done healing the initial first player, which is generally the demo. You're generally going to want to then heal scouts. If you don't have scouts to heal, you need to vocally voice your disapproval of this, because if your scouts aren't getting healed, they're far less effective at mid, which makes you more likely to lose. You also want to heal your demo enough that he can be active, but you don't want to tank your demo the whole mid because he, he'll be stripping your scouts of the heals that they need to be doing well. Also, at mid, as medic, do not cap points. The only time that you're going to be capping points as medic is if it's the last point and you're the last person alive or you're doing some kind of sack play on the last point. Do not cap the point. If you survive 
and you can at all feasibly push up, you should push up. If you die, their medic must die. This ties back into rule number one. If you die, everybody should stop what they're doing and kill their medic. Because if you don't kill their medic, you lose the round automatically. Or you put a tremendous amount of pressure on one player, namely a roamer or a scout, to get a force. But before they come in and push your last with 100% uber advantage, you cannot allow that to happen. Then, lastly, if their medic dies and you're still alive, as soon as you see the little name come across the kill feed, you should say where you are and say gather round or some sort of word that will let your team know that they need to get in a big bubble around you. you they need to stop what they're doing. Doesn't matter if they're in a 1v1 or whatever or they're rocket jumping at somebody. They have to stop and get around you and protect you because if you don't die your team wins the round pretty much automatically unless you have tremendous problems pushing lasts and in the fourth part we're gonna talk about when you should leave mid and the art of leaving mid so here are seven basic guidelines of when you should leave in the first case your demo is the first death a lot of people get irritated with me when I say this but it's it's terribly true now this is going to be sort of what happens in this situation you're on your way to mid and your demo dies you're done going to mid you there you'll heal the people the rest of the way to the doors but you're not going to go out then you're going to turn around and run away ideally the rest of your team at mid will attempt to frag their medic that'll be basically all you do from there is you'll have three or four people sack for their medic. Ideally, one person would stay with you to build, but that's not always possible. Maybe you're, you know, it's gully wash in your pocket just jumped up, and you're down on the ground by yourself, and your demo dies. Then just leave. They should sack for the the med. If you see a couple kills go down in your favor. Maybe they rushed a bunch of people onto your demo and now you've killed all of them? Then sure, ask if you can come back in. And somebody should meet you at the doorway just in case so that you can get back in. Two, if you give the first two deaths at mid, you're definitely done. That's it. You will leave the area immediately. If you're lit and close to the escape route, it's oftentimes better to just leave. A lot of the times people feel guilty and they'll try and hang in there for their team with 20 health and they'll die needlessly. You need to place more of a premium on your life. You should go into every match with the goal of putting out as much heals as possible and never dying. And in this case, if you're hurt, there's no shame in leaving for you. It, it's better for you to survive than to die giving 20 health to some random guy in front of you. If you lose your third player before they lose their third player, that's a time when you need to look at your positioning. If you have really good positioning, then you could probably try and stick it out. It's a little risky, but you could try and stick it out. If you don't have wonderful positioning in that moment, then you should leave. So a common example is, let's say, granary. You're standing on the middle of the point. You got a nice bubble on it. Great. You give the third... Your third player goes down and there. Only two down. Then sure, you could probably stick it out and be okay. Maybe. But if you're in the alley or near choke or something and you give the third death... on The third player goes down on your team and they still have four up, then you're done. If you have a flimsy bubble or no bubble, which we saw a couple times in the last uh, segment where we had the 10 videos, you just shouldn't go. That's It's better for you to not go to mid and survive than go into mid with no protection whatsoever and just die needlessly. If your team gets angry at you, you should tell them not to be so bad at mid. Or you need to re revise your strats so that you have a little bit of protection. 
Because if the other team realizes that you're going in by yourself a lot, they should kill you at the start of every mid, because all they have to do after that is protect their medic and they automatically win rounds. If the other team captures the point, it's generally best for you to just leave. Unless there's some sort of special consideration, such as their medic is dead, or you've got Uber and their medic is dead, anything like that, then maybe you could stay. But in general, if they manage to cap during the mid-fight, you've lost, and it's best for you to leave. Also, leaving on Uber and crits considerations. If you know that their medic hasn't been separated very much, and you've been running around by yourself a lot, maybe you backed out and came back in at the start because you got hurt, then it's a good idea to leave after you're going to prep to force them. Also, if you have crits and things aren't going ideally, a lot of the times it's not that bad to just back out and then crits back in as they're all standing on the point like idiots, and they'll just get annihilated by the crits. So there are considerations there as well. They tend to come into play the least uh, of all the mid-fight considerations. And that's my little guide to playing Medic at Mid. Hopefully you found it to be enjoyable and helpful. This has been Marxist.